Okay, hello again, Ron from Benchmark Trumpets. I'm gonna go over today in a video the process that I use to manufacture the valve set, the body of the trumpet. Um, this will only be for the valve set itself, um, not for pistons. There are a lot of steps in both, and to put that into one video would take far too long and it would take forever to upload. So this is how they start. Each valve tube um, starts life just as a valve tube, basically. I machine it out of straight tubing. Um, the alloy is 260, and I cut the threads. I do a relief cut on the top. I put the notches in the top. And then I measure each tube, and I set up a, di a dial indicator to do this so that I've got uh, a zero point, so that I know if I've got a tube that's 5,000 shorter or 5,000 or more longer, that I can categorize and group those together so that I don't make casings with different length valve tubes. That's actually kind of important. It's important when you're measuring these not to bounce the dial around too much. You're gonna take your time, there's no rush. You're just trying to group these so that you know that you have them that are of similar length. And similar length to me is plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. If it's more than five thousandths, for instance, this tube is more than five thousandths out. It's a plus twelve, plus eleven. This one's not going to go into production with these other tubes. It's too long. So it gets to sit on the side. You need to sand the exteriors to relieve all of the distortion that's inevitable. Um, it doesn't really matter whether you cut these with end mills, drills, any kind of cutting tool at all. It's going to push as it cuts. They're going to get some distortion, so you have to even it out, basically. And the easiest way to do that is with a belt sander. That's what this is. And we're going to go over it with a 100x belt a 220 and then a, a 400, I think. So this is how that looks. This one on a spinner, so they're allowed to actually turn with the wheel and with the belt. but the exterior now has a much cleaner appearance. 
And if you've done this for a long enough time, you know what to look for to tell whether or not it needs more sanding. And this one does, so. What I'm looking for are slight distortions around the hole. I'm also looking for any sort of inclusion in the brass, a line, any sort of dents, any sort of flaws in the material. Because if you don't catch them now and you wait until you've actually got it braised, you're going to have a hard time getting it out at that point. The connecting studs are these tubes that connect the first valve to the second and the second to the third. Um, some manufacturers use straight studs depending on the geometry of the drilling. Some use curves. I use curves. Um, they start their life looking like a bow because they actually are a bow. And then I cut them to fit each valve set. To set the distance between the tubes a machine 516 brass with two opposing radiuses and they're a specific distance and they go between the tubes and they're wired in place. Sometimes they go in very easily and sometimes they're a bit of a pain. You can't control that. Wish I could. Really great. See, that's going to fail. So I'm going to add a second wire because it broke in the wrong spot. You also can't control that. So for the sake of the video, I'm just adding another piece of wire, which I wouldn't normally do. Use a piece of steel to set the distance for each brace.
there's going to be the chance that you're going to get some movement. Okay, before we insert any knuckles, um, any of the tubes that come out of the valve set are considered or called knuckles in the industry. Um, some of these are going to be simple 90 degree angles. Some are going to have different geometry depending on what the valve set's going to be. Um, so if you're looking at it in this respect, this is your first slide, second slide, and the third slide's out here. And the knuckles go in one at a time, and I'll show you just a few of those so you can get an idea of what it looks like. I took the opportunity to pre-shrink some of these so they're a lot easier to just install for the sake of the video. You want to minimize the movement of the casing as much as you can. That's why I'm constantly covering it with my other hand. I'm not trying to obscure the, the video. I'm just trying to make sure that it actually works. I use a set of curved shears to trim each knuckle for clearance. They don't always clear. And anytime you make knuckles, you're going to trim them to fit a valve set. There's no way around it. Reverse crook. As I'm gripping it with my left hand, I'm going to use the pad or the palm of my right hand down here to persuade that knuckle into place. That knuckle has a very specific distance that it needs to sit between the first and this, and this bottom tube. That sets up the, uh, the span of the bow and the slide. And if you get that incorrect, you can't really fix it. And then you start over. You get used to this, but all these little notches and bits and pieces are extremely sharp. So your hands get beat up doing this, but they get used to it. And each set of knuckles go in the same way. I just started with the first valve because I build from the first valve. Then I'll do the third. The seconds are the easiest. I do those last. So I'll show you what it looks like once it's completely assembled. In the interest of this not getting too long and too in-depth, um, once you have all the knuckles installed in a valve set, uh, the next step is to square the valve set itself to make sure that it's sitting flat. So I use a, a jig to set it up on, and then I'll actually hit it to square it. It's hard to know with the video how it's going to render, so I'm kind of trying to keep it in the frame so you can actually see what I'm looking at. Um, once you've got it square to itself, then you need to basically square all the knuckles to the valve set so that you have the correct distance between the seconds, between the thirds, between the firsts, so that each of your slides sets up correctly once it's braised. If you do not do that at this point where you have a specific measurement between these tubes, you will never get it correct. You have to throw it out and start it over. After that's done, after you've got the distances set and everything is correct as far as the measurements go, the next step is to brace it. And brazing involves flux and silver and a lot of heat. Um, brazing is not soldering. Brazing is actually melting basically the separate sections into one and using silver to connect them. You're going to get it up above 1600 degrees and you can do it two different ways. You can wire braze with just silver wire or you can use paste that has the silver already installed in it with the flux. Um, I do both so it's just something you get used to. Uh, wire brazing is a lot more difficult.
Okay, once the valve set is brazed, it's going to have a pinkish color to it. Um, you want to check it once it's cooled off. All the joints need to be, you need to be sure that you actually got brazed in and around all the joints inside and out of the valve set. Um, obviously, this is just a quick video to show how casings are actually brazed. Um, the exterior of the casing at this point is covered in, it's hard to see, it's covered in what looks like glass. It's the flux, once it reaches a certain temperature, it turns into a crystalline structure on the outside of the brass, and that needs to be removed before you do any machining for the valve set. To do that, what I use is just white vinegar and salt. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it sits in that, that solution for roughly 20 minutes. If the, if the solution is relatively new, it'll take that stuff off the exterior. It should go into an ultrasonic after that, and then there are machining and stamping points that we'll go over next. I'm just showing a little bit of a close-up of what this looks like when it's in the actual solution. And this is just vinegar and salt. Um, I leave the steel wires on it at this point. I don't really care about those. But you can see there's actually a reaction going on right now. And that glaze that's on the exterior of the casing is being removed by the vinegar. Okay, so the valve set is ready to be machined at this point. It's cleaned. I'm okay with all the joints. There is silver all the way around all of them. The first step is with a hole saw. That's gonna to start to remove these interior knuckles. And I use a, a drill bushing on the top of the valve set. And this is gonna look kind of antiquated the way that we do it, but this is the way most companies started doing this. In the past, you want to make sure you use some oil. You take your time. Do not rush. Take your time to get it on and off so that you don't take a chance of wrecking your casing or losing your hand in the process. And each valve gets the same process. want to make sure you let the cutter do the work. You do not want to force it through the hole. You'll feel it when it passes the last step. Once it passes the last step, there's no resistance. Those are just pieces falling out at this point. At this point, you have holes all the way through. All the knuckles have been removed. Okay, the next step I did not show. I went from the hole saw to the first machining step to clear enough space to insert a steel pin. Um, at this point in the casing process, you add your stamping. Uh, your logo name, your serial numbers, um, and it's machined out. You can see the inside. It's nice and smooth. 
This, for instance, is machined out to 629 right now. So at 629, I'm going to use an arbor press. And this gets, let me get it to focus. That's my logo. This is when they're added because it's going to do a, a lot of damage to the inside of the casing. It's going to distort it quite a bit, even though there's a steel pin there. Um, but this is before the last two machining steps. So anything that you do to it at this point, you can remove with tooling. Um, the opening of the holes from the initial hole saw out to a finished size can be done in realistically in two ways. One is with a milling machine and two is with uh, a set of series of cutters that are stepped to enlarge the holes. I'm not going to give much more information on that. It's it's not proprietary. It's it's used in other shops in the, the industry. It's, it's a glorified um, reamer basically. A size reamer with a pilot on the front of it and then a pilot in back of it. And if that makes any sense to you, that means you actually know something about machining. So if not, well, that's the way it goes. I'm going to add serial numbers after this. I've got a revolving steel stamp that I'll set the machine up to do the same thing as this. It's just going to put a serial number down here. Okay, the stamping is done. You can actually see now the logo name and the actual serial number. This is number 146. The bore size on this valve set is 460. So it's going to be a B flat the way that the knuckles are laid out for the uh, first slide, bottom two for the tuning slide. It's machined out to 629 right now. Um, from there it goes from 629 to 640, from 640 to 650, from 650 up to 660, and then it gets honed, basically to fit the ballasts that are going to be set into it. The ballasters get added after the machining is done. I make all the ballasters here. They go onto the top of the valve set. There are more machining steps, obviously, to set those up. They get top caps, bottom caps, before they could become an instrument. The knuckles are trimmed to specific lengths, depending on the application of the casing. Um, for instance, a B-flat cornet is going to be the same knuckle length as a B-flat trumpet. They're going to have different lengths than a C trumpet would have or than an E-flat D would have. Obviously, the shorter the, the trumpet gets, the higher the pitch goes. So you have to make sure that you compensate for that when you do the knuckle trimming on whichever casing you're making. Um, but that is a rough estimation of how I make... Sorry, there's a big spider on the floor. And that didn't get him. That's a rough estimation of how I make valve sets here. I do all the knuckle production, all of the casing production, basically all of all of the production. And they end up, if I can get this out of the holder, looking like these once they're done. And this is a group of five that are in production right now. They're B-flats and they're going to be made for more of a concert application. Most of the stuff I've built so far for B-flat has been commercially based reverse lead pipes. These are going to be different. I'm going with a wider span on the tuning slide for these, so it sets the lead pipe a bit higher. And I'm going to do some interesting things with the bracing so that I don't have to change my baluster length to accommodate that. But these should be done, the bodies will be done this week for sure, the bell should be done this week. At any rate, that's casing production in my shop. So thanks for watching, stay well.